Hey guys, I wanted to go through a quick exercise video on working on getting to that inside edge of the foot under control with a controlled and a strong arch. This is something that we've been using for our patients, especially those that are dealing with either pain on the inside edge of the arch of the foot or on the inside edge of the knee, maybe even uh, pain on the knuckle of the big toe. Um, we gotta be able to get to the inside edge of that foot to push off, right? That's what's gonna allow us to activate our glutes. It's gonna stabilize the pelvis when we're able to internally rotate and get to that inside edge. It's gonna allow us to use, to create torque in the glutes to allow us to use the glute to push off. So it's an important position, but we can't just let it collapse to the inside, right? I think a lot of us are hanging out in that posterior tilt knees to the outside. Then we couple that with wearing like all kinds of crap on the inside of our shoe, right? We got all these supports and stuff. And so the muscles down there just don't feel like they need to work, right? Because I got a there's an arch support there. It's going to keep me from rolling in. And we just stop using all of this, right? We hang out out here. We don't need muscle support here because we got arch supports in. And then we take our shoes off, right? Everything just collapses to the inside. And those muscles don't activate maybe the way they should. Just a theory, but makes some sense in my head. Anyway, so if I'm going to... If I'm gonna create that internal rotation position, I need to be able to get to the inside edge of the foot, but I need to do it in a strong way, right? I need to create a post so that I have something to push into and push off of. This is built in to our foot, right? The mechanism is called the windlass mechanism. The, the muscles of the arch tense into the arch. It creates this like truss effect and it creates almost like a spring in the foot, right? So when we load that windlass mechanism, those muscles tense the arch, the, the plantar fascia tightens up. And then as you go to push off, it springs the foot back into position. It's built in, right? We're supposed to do it. Google it, it's a cool thing. Anyway, so what we wanna do here is we wanna to get to that inside edge, but most of us, myself included, are a little lazy with our feet and it's gonna be tricky. So we're gonna do it sitting in a chair. Now, when I sit in the chair, my butt tucks under and my knees go to the outside, right? That's kind of a normal position. I can't walk around like that or, you know, all that dumb stuff's gonna happen and my foot's gonna hurt, my knee's gonna hurt. So. What we're gonna practice is rotating that hip to the inside. So I'm gonna bring my knee in line with my foot and I'm gonna put the outside edge of my uh, heel on the floor. The first thing I'm gonna do with my outside edge of my heel on my floor, on the floor, I'm gonna push my pinky, pinky toe into the floor and I'm gonna lift. So my toes, these four toes are gonna to go down with the pinky toe. I'm gonna to lift my big toe and try to stretch my arch as much as I can. Okay, so I'm gonna press into the floor, lift that big toe as much as I can. Okay, then I'm gonna flip it by pressing my big toe down, rolling to the inside edge of the foot and trying to lift the other toes as much as I can. And really try to spread that toe apart. And then we're gonna lift and then we're gonna press. And I wish I could say that I made this video in one take but I can tell you that after a few takes of doing this, more takes than it should have taken, the muscles in my feet are extremely tired, <laughs> right? Definitely something that needs work. Anyway, so we're gonna press down, we're gonna lift that big toe, we're gonna press that big toe down, and we're gonna lift and spread those toes, right? So we should be able to dissociate the toes, right? I should be able to push my big toes down while my other toes come up, and vice versa. We're just gonna add that little rock to it. Pinky toe down, rock to the big toe side, spread the toes as much as you can. That pinky toe doesn't want to go anywhere. I'm feeling that squeeze out here. I'm feeling the squeeze in the arch and then vice versa, right? Part one. Part two, once you kind of figure it out in sitting, we need to do it in weight bearing. So when I go to walk and I'm going to roll to that inside edge, not only do I need my foot my arch and those muscles in my arch to engage, but I need my hip to rotate to the inside and post at the hip, and I need to post at the inside knee, right? So this muscle, this big quad muscle that sits here, it needs to kick in to keep my knee from just bopping over. And then the muscles of my inner thigh have to pull that hip back and into the hip socket so that I land in the hip socket and I don't just collapse and roll into the inside edge of the hip socket and end up with like a irritated labrum, um, which is extremely common nowadays. So we're gonna move this from a sitting drill to a kneeling drill. So when we go to kneeling, it's gonna allow me work on the knee side, okay? 
So on the knee side, same thing happens here. Tibia rotates to the outside, pinky toe plants, roll to the inside post, but now I'm gonna let my knee drift over top of the toe and I'm gonna try to squeeze this muscle on the inside of my knee as my knee starts to go in line with my toes and then as far in front as it'll let me go without my heel coming up. Okay, one more time, I'm gonna back up just a smidge. I'll land on the pinky toe side, roll to the inside, press that big toe into the carpet, keep your arch intact, load that knee, try to squeeze it, feel it get tight. You know, the bodybuilders all talk about that mind-muscle connection. We need it here, right? We need to think about the toes, we need to think about the knee. We're gonna press, good. Once you have it kneeling, we're gonna to move to standing. Now in standing, I'm gonna get hip, I'm gonna get knee, I'm gonna get foot. So I'm gonna to roll to the pinky toe side. I think it's easier to do both at the same time, right and left. Roll to the pinky toe side, lift the toes, okay? When I roll to the inside edge now, I'm gonna need that knee to engage. So I'm gonna to roll to the inside. My hip is gonna roll in and I'm gonna press like heck to get my toes and my hips to the inside. Roll back out, get that pinky toe engaged again. Roll back in, press, 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 press. Squeeze that quad, squeeze your inner thigh muscles, get everything to rotate in, back and forth. Nice little drill here to work rotation at the hip, Rotation at the foot, rotation at the knee. Don't go fast. Feel your arch muscles, feel your knee muscles, feel your thigh. Squeeze everything. Foot's starting to lose it, pull the toes apart. I'm starting to get pretty tired, starting to lose my focus. You got somewhere between eight and 15 reps probably before things go to crap um, and you just start losing your ability for your mind to focus, stop, give it a little break, come back to it. Two or three rounds to fatigue. I've done much more than that tonight. Two or three rounds to fatigue, trying to control those positions in and out as much as you can. I want you actively trying to contract those muscles. Muscle of the arch, muscle of the inside knee, muscles of the inner thigh pulling to the inside. Really try to build some strength build some uh, ability to what I like to call the post, right? We're gonna go into it, we're gonna post, and then we're gonna push off. And that's what's gonna give us our power when we walk, run, jump, all those good things. Um, give that one a try. I think you'll find it a little challenging to do at first, but you'll start to notice the more you practice it, you get some control in your feet, you get some control through that knee. Um, and then when you get up and just try to walk around afterwards, you're like, ooh, kind of feel a little more free. Like you notice some freedom uh, in the knee and the hip. So see what you think. Right, as always, if it hurts, bail out, right? Talk to a professional, let them, them check you out. That's a position you're not really used to getting into, right? So if it's new to you, it may not feel great, scrap it, it's not a good exercise for you at this moment and this time, let somebody help you with it. Um, if it feels good, build some strength, right? Build progressively, load it like you would any other exercise. But if it hurts, scrap it. Um, the goal is to take yourself into ranges of motion, into things in these controlled environments, controlled settings, Eventually, you want to make that exercise challenging enough that it's more challenging than what you would experience in real life, right? So that you've been there, you've done that, you've experienced it, your brain knows what to do as your foot goes into that position, you're strong in that position. Um, and so if you end up that you can push out of it, right? And, and quite honestly, I think we're just working normal, what we should have as normal physiological ranges in this drill. Um, but we all know that that knee in, foot in position is where a lot of injuries occur. So. I want you to be strong enough to control going into that range of motion so that you can post it, plant off of it, and then rotate out of it, not just kind of fall to the inside. I think when those muscles aren't on, we just fall to the inside. Now we're relying on passive supports, whether that's something we put on, like a shoe insole or a knee brace, or the ligaments and, and the passive structures of the joint. So if we can make it stronger, give it that dynamic control, it should give us the support we need to keep, keep our joints healthy, moving well. So, Give that one a go. Let me know what you think about it. If you have questions, put them in the comments below. If you hate this exercise, let me know. We'll try to find ways to modify it. 
Um, it's one we've been using a lot and um, starting to notice some significant improvements in our patients with knee pain, especially those people with that posterior tilt, knee, little bow leg, and a roll to the outside, stay on the outside edge of the foot. This one's magic. So let me know what you think about it. Shoot us a comment below. Uh, if you really enjoyed this, like, subscribe, share. That helps us out. Helps us grow the channel. And we hope to see you in the next one.